Hi, this is Dr. Amy Harwick. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Today we're going to talk about when to see a therapist. Now, in the 19th century, people studied phrenology, and phrenology was the study of bumps on the head indicating psychological disorders. If it was so clear-cut as feeling a bump on your head and knowing to get help, a lot more people would do it. But now we have to listen to our intuition, assess how we're feeling, and make that decision proactively. Phrenology was actually found to be pretty ineffective, so it's no longer studied or considered to be valid. But now we have to listen to ourselves. So people see a therapist for a range of issues, going from depression to anxiety, change of life. But sometimes it's just to be a better version of yourself. In this video, we're going to talk about all those things to look out for and what to do and how to reach a therapist. There are many reasons that prevent people from seeking therapy. It might be culturally looked upon as a sign of weakness. You might be intimidated. Maybe you don't think you can afford it. There's all these reasons and there's a solution to most of them. So culturally, some people believe that it's a sign of weakness or you have to have this big bad problem to go to therapy. But that's really not the case. You can seek therapy to address an issue like depression, anxiety, a breakup. You can also seek therapy to be a better you. Maybe be better at a job that you're already good at. Improve a relationship that you're already enjoying. All of these things can be improved through therapy. If you think it's too expensive, what a lot of people don't know is as of 2014, we are actually required to cover substance abuse and mental health through our insurances. So if you have an HMO or a PPO insurance, you can call your insurance company and see what's covered and who's covered, and you probably have some level of benefit or help. There's also sliding scale clinics. There's many, many options to seek help if you don't think you can afford it. So you don't have to have a significant impairment to see a therapist, and that's if you're not functional, you can't get out of bed, you might have suicidal thoughts. Of course these are reasons to seek help. This is the absolute reason to seek help, but you don't have to be at that level to seek help and get the benefits of seeing a therapist. There are a lot of benefits to seeing a therapist. Some of the benefits include help, just having somebody to vent to, having somebody to listen, getting tools, getting more insight, more awareness. All of these things are benefits of therapy. Sometimes our own coping skills fail us. We may engage in certain behaviors or activities that worked for us at some point in time, but then at some point they don't work for us anymore. And we have to figure something new out. Maybe it was drinking alcohol to minimize a problem. Maybe you had a friend that you talked to that was a really great listening ear, but you're just not getting that benefit from them anymore, or they have a bias or opinion. Sometimes our coping strategies that worked for us before stop working for us, and that's a great time to see a therapist. Seeing a therapist is a form of self-care. It's a way you can take care of yourself. Self-care, which we'll go over in other videos in the future, is a way that you can intentionally help yourself by behaviors that you're proactively doing. So seeing a therapist and engaging in those helpful tools will help you benefit yourself psychologically and ultimately help you make better decisions. So when are the problems bad enough that you need to reach out to a therapist? Well, there's many things to look at. Are you feeling intense emotions, intense anger, sadness, grief, overwhelming emotion? Maybe you're having difficulty sleeping. Uh, maybe your performance at work is affected or your friendships, your relationships. All of these reasons are reasons to seek a therapist. If you are experiencing somatic symptoms or symptoms that are physical without a medical explanation, you've been to the doctor, there's no real reason why you have those headaches, stomach aches, maybe digestive problems, problems with sleeping, all of these physical symptoms sometimes can be manifested by psychological issues, manifesting physically in your body, and that's a great time to seek some help as well. So let's think about it using this analogy. If you're going to the gym, let's say you're going to the gym because you want to lose weight. There's a problem. You want to lose weight. You go to the gym, you do some cardio, you eat healthy, you lift some weights, and then you lose weight. You have worked on the problem. But going to the gym also gives you other benefits, better mental clarity, resilience, increasing your immune system. So there are these other positive benefits from going to the gym besides just losing the weight. Same thing with therapy. Let's say you're anxious or you've had a breakup. That's the problem. You want to work on this problem. But then by going to therapy, you're going to gain insight, awareness, better coping tools for the future, um, ear to listen to. All of these things are these other positive byproducts of seeing a therapist that you will then get in addition to working on the problem that you initially contacted the therapist about. 
Another thing to pay attention to is, is this outside of your norm? So we wanna look at behaviors that deviate from what's normal or typical for you. So if you wake up every morning at 7 a.m., you eat on a certain schedule, you have the same job every day, same time, but then you're sleeping in and you're eating unhealthy, maybe binge eating, drinking more alcohol than usual, that's something to pay attention to. However, if this is your norm, if your life is normally a little dysregulated, you sleep in pretty late, these behaviors may not necessarily indicate a problem for you. So you wanna look at things that deviate from what your norm is. Another thing to pay attention to is unhealthy coping. So you can use coping strategies that you think are working for you, but they're not really. So some of these unhealthy coping strategies would be drinking excessive amounts of alcohol, drug use, excessive caffeine, or any other compulsive behavior that doesn't really work for you. And that could even be compulsively checking social media. So these types of things maybe make you feel good in the moment, but ultimately they're not helping you. And the sooner you reach out for some type of help or address this issue and become more proactive, the better you're gonna feel. Why add to more issues and more problems on top of the things you're already dealing with it if you don't have to? I hope you enjoyed the video on when to see a therapist. This is Dr. Amy Harwick. You can check me out on social media, Instagram, Facebook at Dr. Amy Harwick, my website, dramyharwick.com. Until next time, thanks for watching.